28 tips and tricks and things you should build in your medieval world. If there was one point in time where I can time travel back to, it would most certainly be medieval times. Unfortunately though, time machines don't exist yet, so the next best thing is to have some fun with some cool Minecraft builds. Oh, and believe it or not, I had to learn how to pronounce medieval correctly before even starting this video. Medieval. We'll be covering a lot of cool builds and tips in this video, so just pause at any time if you need to. Let's start with something simple. Light posts really add a lot of color, and light, to your builds. Here's some really cool designs that you can use. You can use any type of wood, fence, or lantern combos, mix and match, use any height you want. A really cool trick is you can place a daylight detector on top of your redstone lamp and it'll automatically light up when things get dark. You can make a simple medieval village well by simply placing some stairs, walls, with some fences on top. Or hey, why not make a grander version? Use chains for the bucket rope and use a cauldron halfway down the well. This looks really cool and is definitely worth building. Anyway, have a look at the bathhouse thingy that they built next to the well here. This is just absolutely poggers. People were really cruel in medieval times. I mean, I guess they're still pretty cruel today as well, but uh, back in the days, these hanging jail cages were pretty common and were used to publicly torment some unfortunate folks. But hang on a sec, this video is starting to sound a bit uh, grim. Let's move on to something a little more cheerful, shall we? Place mini garden pockets here and there across town. They'll keep your city dwellers happy. Use different crops and flowers for each lot. Be sure to add some benches for people to relax in. Here's some cool designs. Add a pond around your gardens too. Add lily pads on the pond and some grass blocks with grass for extra detailing. You can also add pergolas near your gardens for a nice spot to chill. This one uses leaf blocks on the roof. We can modify this by using campfires as the roofing. Shut off the fire with a shovel and add some vines on the side. We didn't really have cars back then so we'd have to move things around with carts. Place these cool little builds scattered around your world, in the market, on the streets, next to rivers, you get the idea. There's also a bigger version of this cart, equivalent to driving a Hummer instead of a Toyota back in the days. Place random stuff on the cart like chests, pots, flowers, profession tables, whatever you want. Here's a cool little trick that I learned from B-Blocks on YouTube. If you place a minecart with chests on a rail on top of the cart, move it to the middle, break the blocks and let it fall down, nice little touch. Now let's add some color to your world. This is probably one of my favorite parts of a medieval build. Make your market stall foundation from any blocks that you want. Wood works great at the bottom. Use fences to support the roof and use wool blocks for the roof. Stripey color patterns work really well here. And be sure to use a wide range of colors for each shop. You can add carpets on top of the wool blocks to make the surface uneven for that little extra level of detail. Place item frames and put an item on it to show customers what that stall is selling. And you can also place a fireplace, shut off the fire with a shovel, and place some fish for cool detailing. Add chests on the stalls, that's where they keep their money. You can use pressure plates on top of blocks for details, and you can use crafting tables for decoration as well. You can add mini crates with trap doors, just like this one right here. You can also build the market completely indoors, cause hey, it rains sometimes. Here's an original design from my survival world that's mostly made out of wood and planks and some banners. Oh, and it's a fully working trading hall with some amazing trades. I mean, you can get all the best enchants for peanuts here. You might want to have a peek at my super awesome villager trading guide and villager breeder for this. Now, some of these medieval sellers prefer not to settle down and sell at one spot and rather go around with wagons. Here's a small wagon design that I found on Pinterest and here's a bigger one. Add some horsies up front and tie them with a lead for awesome realism. You can spice up your market and your town in general by adding flags hanging on strings across buildings. Definitely looks more festive. You can place a fence and wool blocks on top of structures or anywhere basically to make big flags. Glorious. Here's another cool hanging flag design, no wind blowing involved here. I love the looks of this medieval mineshaft. It has a large opening and several platforms that lead you down all the way into the shafts and the mine shafts itself is very well decorated. Bridges are an integral part of any medieval build and they add a lot of flavor. Here's some really cool bridge designs that you can use. You might even want to manually make small rivers around your build just so that you can make bridges on top of them. Speaking of bridges, you can make a hanging bridge across high ground for some amazeball looking builds. Here's a crappy version of it from my survival world. You can also make those level bridges, you know, not the hanging ones or curved ones. And this version uses sandstone and rather surprisingly, I think it looks pretty awesome. Do take note of the sandstone based structures in the background as well. Option number three, make a stone based bridge spanning across a ravine with a river flowing under it. Holy damn, these guys do know how to build great worlds. 
Better yet, you can build houses on these bridges, and this reminds me a lot of the Ponte Vecchio, which is a medieval stone, closed spandrel segmental arch bridge over the Amo River in Florence, Italy. If I sounded smart there, it's because I literally read that sentence off of Wikipedia. Custom trees work really well for any world, not just medieval ones, and there's lots of tutorials on these on YouTube already. Also, place some scattered, chopped trees here and there. This makes your city look alive. Very reminiscent of all the illegal logging that companies do. Place log on the ground sideways and this will look like a pile of trees that just got chopped. You can also add rails on top of the wood if you want it to look like the wood is being tied together. You can also put ladders on the wood for extra detailing. And this one is by Borshi on YouTube. What do you do after you chop the trees? You chop the logs. Thank you Captain Obvious. And what do you do with the chopped wood? They make big crates to deliver old school luxuries. You can make a hollow crate with just trap doors. You can fill the hollow crates with blocks for a different look. You can also use crafting tables and add stairs on the side. It looks like the crate is tied up with ropes along the sides. After you unbox goods from said crates, it's normally quite a mess. It usually looks something like this. Random crafting table placements, a chest here and there, make it look messy and realistic. Make a bathhouse to make sure your citizens can relax and also not get too much body odor. This design has water flowing from the side. I'd sure love to have a dip in there, cause you know, body odor. Or better yet, build a massive medieval pool. By the way, can you imagine the kind of effort they'd have to do to fill in these pools back then? Amazing. You can easily make a simple blacksmithing area by adding an anvil, a furnace, and a cauldron. Place some lava and magma blocks to also add a nice touch. Spice up your town center by adding a simple water fountain. You can simply use some blocks and just add water on top of it. Or make an OP sprinkly water fountain by using glass blocks and panes. Add a dispenser with the hole facing upwards to look like it's where the water is coming out from. You can use anvils for railings. It's hella expensive material wise, but hey, if you have an iron golem farm, you can easily splurge. And if you don't have one, there's a tutorial link on the description below. You can also use a combination of anvils facing one side and then a different side and also hoppers or even cauldrons for that chain link looking gate kind of feel. You can also face the hoppers in certain directions to make more interesting looks. Since cars weren't really trendy back then, horses were the symbol of pride and their poop smells too. So definitely build a stable in your world. The tripwire looks like where you tie the horses lead to. And a little detailing tip here as well, if you place a gate next to a wall, it'll be slightly misaligned with the other gate. Cool stuff. The horse needs to eat something, so do add some hay blocks in the stable. And here's a simple water trough for your cars, <clears throat> horses. And you can also put some fish in that water trough, and now it's a little pond. Fun fact, goldfishes keeps the water trough clean for your horses, so why not? What's a good medieval world without some awesome looking farmland? You can build your farm in square patches, but honestly, these random shaped farmlands separated by leaves is the perfect look. I absolutely love it. Use different plants on the farm lots. You can even use flowers of different kinds. Keep some of the farm lots empty as well with just farmland and soil blocks with some hay on the side to make it look like that lot was recently harvested. Oh, and you can also add brown carpet detailing here just to make the ground look uneven. Have a little lake near your build? No? Well, go build one. Back in the days, flourishing cities were always mostly built near rivers or lakes. Okay, if you already got a lake, make a little dock. Or make a super massive one. Seriously, these guys are insane builders. Cathedrals are really cool looking builds that were present in many European medieval cities. It's a handful to build though. Maybe just make a mini version of it instead. I mean, honestly, this is really tough to build. Here's a few designs to inspire you or just plain get you intimidated. Let's go underneath one of these buildings. Ever played Diablo? Remember how there's usually portals to some dark world under the cathedrals and stuff? That's probably a good spot to place your nether portal. And do pay attention to the detailing on the tunnel leading into the nether portal. This is a really good way to decorate your hallways or tunnels. Housing. Medieval houses were predominantly built from rocks and wood. Oh wait, they still are. But anyway, use logs for housing pillars and fill in the areas between the pillars with diorite or wood or any good looking material. Use trapdoors for the window details and you can place fences on the windows as well. Or just leave it completely open. 
When making stone-based builds, be sure to mix it up with your choice of blocks. Use vanilla stone blocks, smooth stones, bricks, etc. You can use mossy cobblestone to make it look more rustic. Furthermore, add leaf blocks on the side. It'll look like vines that are creeping upwards. Building good looking roofs can be a bit challenging. So here's a nice roof pattern guide that I found on Pinterest. Feel free to pause if you need to copy it. You can use different blocks for the roofs of each house, especially when the houses are attached to each other. This makes the separation between each house a lot more clear. Build windmills in your medieval house. That's basically one of the cool landmarks of a medieval world. Basically build a house and just build a windmill in front of it. You can use a two axis windmill like this one, or you can use a one axis build like this one right here. Use a combination of logs, trap doors, wool blocks, fences, and buttons for detailing your windmills. You can add a hanging signpost in front of a house to make it look like a shop. Personally, I'd put an item frame with some item in it to signify what's being sold, like an alchemy shop or a weapons shop. Spice up the roofs of your larger houses with chimneys, just add some blocks, and put a wall or a pot on top of it, and you're good. Add a little tavern to your build. First of all, we need a beer barrel. Let's just make a really simple one by using a barrel, and place a tripwire in front of it, and that's it. Use pots or sea pickles for the beer mugs, and now we need some chairs for the patrons. Most taverns are indoors because you really don't want the drunkards on the street, but hey, since they'll end up there anyway, why not make an outdoor tavern as well? These tables are made with fences and a pressure plate on top of it. Now if we used solid blocks instead, like inverted stairs for example, you can place food on top with an item frame, then put the food on the item frame and cover it up with a pressure plate. Be sure to use different kinds of wood tones for the table and the chair. That was a lot of talking so far and I feel like taking a dump. Speaking of which, taking dumps back in the days must have been pretty awful. The only saving grace here is that it's pretty easy to build in Minecraft. Dispenser facing upwards giving you that little hole to aim your poo poo to and then add a trapdoor to cover up your mess. Let's flip from the brown side of things to some luxury. Add carpets to the fancier houses in your builds, pattern it out a bit like these ones right here, and you can also add storage rooms. I personally fancy this messy look, the chests are just placed randomly here and there, and add some cobwebs as well, cause hey, even your real life storage room has cobwebs. Add a little reading room with a table, bookshelves, and a little lantern. And let's make a really simple medieval bathtub. Just place trap doors, flip it upwards, and then fill the center bits with water. A 1x2 space fits perfectly for this. Let's have a quick look at some really simple medieval bedrooms. And if you enjoy the video so far guys, a subscribe and turning on notifications would be absolutely fantastic. Just a minor detailing trick, you can use a hopper instead of a bell if you want a darker looking bell. I mean those default golden bells, if I was a villager back then, you know, I'd grab it and sell it. Your city needs walls. Which kind of walls depends on what they can afford or what you prefer to have. For my personal world, I really like the rugged look of wooden fence walls. All you need is a combination of logs, stripped logs, and maybe even another wood tone. Put wooden fences on top of the wood pillars and place some stone buttons on the stone blocks. Add some leaves here and there and if you want, you can also add a bamboo layer behind the wall. A little trick to stop the bamboo from growing too high is by placing string where you want it to stop growing. Connect your wall with some towers to enhance your city's fortifications. Here's how I've built mines in my world. And you can also build a gate between the towers. I mean, every castle pretty much has one, right? Granted, I'm a bit ashamed when I show you clips from my own Minecraft world, as it's really humbled by the other two Minecraft worlds that I've been showcasing in this video so far. I hope one day I can build as awesome as these folks. Here's another version of the wood fence, but with a walkway on top of it. Similar design principles as the previous build, but it's hella cool that there's actually a walkway. I didn't think of that when I built mines. I can imagine city guards patrolling these walls. You can also build a wooden watchtower along these walls, which look a little bit like this. And when you're ready to upgrade, you can build a stone version of the walls using this design. It definitely looks way more formidable to penetrate. Uh, yeah. Do check out the massive towers defending this one. I mean, this looks really cool. Uh, it's gonna take some time to build, but oh yeah, if you have the time and resources, do it. It also makes a lot of sense to make these towers on shores for naval protection. Usually, these comes with cannonballs, but 
those weren't really present in this uh, Novigrad build by Elysium Fire. So let's build one real quick and it should look something like this. You can make Excalibur, also known as King Arthur's Sword, by placing an armor stand inside a hole and then place a stone block and an iron rod on top of the stone block and then you push it down with pistons. In case you've been living in a cave prior to medieval times, that is the legendary sword that's stuck in a rock and only a true king can pull it out. Aqueducts were part of more modern civilizations of its time. It provided water and sanitation for the city's inhabitants and it also looks hella cool in this build. Moving along with this aqueduct, check out how the water also leads to a water wheel. Holy cow, this build is... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just lost for words. Let's not forget the best method of transportation back in the days were by ship. Here's some examples of amazing looking ships. I honestly don't think I'll ever be able to build ones looking this good. I mean, I'll be honest here, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really tough. I mean, I mean, look at these. Look at these. And look at that. And this one. And that. This. That. Yeah. To be honest though, if you were gonna copy a massive ship build, these two, the ones I'm showing you right now, are probably the easiest ones to build. Uh, basically because they're not built diagonally. The ships that I showed you earlier were mostly diagonally built, which it's just, it, it's just way above my pay grade right now. Your ships need a place to dock. For a more natural arrangement, you can place docks randomly scattered like this one right here. And let's have a close-up of the wooden version of one of the docks. And let's also have a close-up of the rock-hard version of that. If you're intimidated by big ships, why not build a mini version instead? Heck, build a mini medieval world if you'd like, that'd be pretty cute. You do need a place to build all these massive ships, and they're built on dry docks just like this one right here. Especially if you're building a big ship. Remember to build a gate in front of the dry dock too to make sure you can let the ship out. When traversing haplessly at night, ships need a beacon to lock onto. In medieval times, there's no lights, so what they did was they built lighthouses with large fires burning up top to help ships find their way. You can also build a crane to pick up goods from the ships. It's a handful to build, but hey, if you've got the time, why not? Here's another crane design that I really like. I think it's my favorite one so far. It looks sturdy and well-built. Cranes can also be placed on quote-unquote under construction sites just like this one right here. You can see that the aqueduct is still being built. And remember the chopped wood earlier in the video? You can add a crane as well on top of that using this build to pick up one of the one of the logs. Or heck, lift the entire log pile with a bigger crane like this one. Add walkways to connect all the things that you've built so far. Mix up the blocks for texturing, add some leaves here and there. You should also add some rivers to your medieval world or cities. And this one here is a stone-walled river that I think really fits well into some of the upper-class quarters of a medieval city. This one. This one is one of the harder, harder things to do, but it's an awesome trick. It's, uh, it's probably one of the best build hacks in Minecraft for pretty much any world. You can basically use custom player head models to make mini custom blocks. So what you do is you either have a friend log in with that skin and uh, kill him and grab the head. That sounded pretty grim. Or you can use uh, you can use a command and you can basically grant the head to your inventory straight away. Now using this method, you can make mini pots, foods, or pretty much anything. It just looks so cool. One really cool trick when you're using this kind of method is to use a chest looking head. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Look at this tiny little chest. I was literally grinning when I first saw this on, uh, on this world. You can make a fire column on your world by simply using a campfire at the bottom and just adding glass blocks or panes to simulate a larger fire burning. Build statues in your city. They're usually awesome as a centerpiece or scattered around your city if you've got a really big build. Want to go even bigger? Make a huge one in the middle of the sea. Be sure to add custom banners and scatter them across your city to show who's boss. Your city defenders need a place to do training, and you can't go wrong with the classic archery range. Last but not least, tip number 128. Holy cow, that was a lot. Try building diagonally. Did you notice that most of these buildings aren't rectangle-ish? Yeah, I mean, surely it's harder to build, but 
I think it fits really perfectly with how medieval cities were laid out back then. Pretty chaotically. A beautiful kind of chaos, rather. And with that, I'll end the video. So, was there a build that I missed? Um, which one was your favorite one on the video? Do let me know and leave it in the comment section below. Big shout out again to Elysium Fire for the Novigrad world, and the other one is called Medieval RTX, and that's on Minecraft Bedrock Edition, built by Nvidia. Thanks for watching, the name's Masbro signing out, and I hope I'll catch you guys next time.